Good day everyone and welcome back to Frugal Radio. Today we're going to look at four excellent software defined radios in the $100 to $200 price range. These are what I call step up SDRs as they are a natural purchase progression up from the budget software defined radios we looked at back in episode 3. If you've not seen episode 3 before I recommend viewing it now before this episode. In it, I pitted three budget software defined radios against each other, demonstrating each one's capabilities on a variety of signals and helping you work out which one would be best for you. Just to be clear, my recommendations from episode 3 haven't changed. These are fantastic budget SDRs. Although prices have crept up a few dollars here and there in the last year, they still meet the criteria of being frugal. In my shack, I use these budget SDRs daily, even more than the step up SDRs I'm covering today, because I leave them running 24 7. They continually monitor VHF, UHF, and satellite signals such as aircraft voice, aircraft data, DMR, and next end trunking systems, as well as large P 25 public safety systems. You can check out some of the other videos on the channel to find out more about those aspects of monitoring if you haven't seen them before. The four STRs I'll mention today are the AirSpy Mini that retails at $99, the STR Play RSP1A that comes in at $119, the AirSpy R2 at $169, and finally the AirSpy HF Plus Discovery also at $169. As you can see, these four SDRs are still financially accessible and are step-up devices that are definitely worthy of your consideration. You might be wondering, why would I want to buy a step-up SDR? Well, firstly, you'll see increased bandwidth. Your typical budget SDR receives around 2.4 MHz of radio signal simultaneously, whereas these step-up SDRs offer between 4.8 and 10 MHz of simultaneous monitoring. That can make quite a difference when searching for new signals or decoding multiple channels of digital data simultaneously. Secondly, some of the step-up units offer a wider frequency range and some are tailored to perform best in certain parts of the radio spectrum. Next is higher sensitivity. As you spend more money, you are able to purchase devices made with higher quality components. These upgraded components aid in signal detection and decoding. In other words, you may pick up signals from further away or with greater clarity because of the higher quality hardware. These step-up STRs also offer a higher dynamic range than budget STRs. This means they're better at dealing with strong signals that can overpower the budget receivers. Let's say you've got a local high power transmitter on 137 MHz. This might actually overpower your local airband air traffic control center on 134.5 megs, making it impossible to monitor. A step-up STR will not be as easily overloaded, meaning you'll have a far greater chance of being able to monitor that airband signal. Then we have the issue of filtering. Budget STRs are wideband devices without much RF filtering. Some of the step-up units we will be looking at today have multiple band pass, high pass or low pass filters. These are built in pre-select and switchable filters that do an amazing job of rejecting unwanted signals outside the target frequency range. Again, this really helps deal with strong signals that often overload budget SDRs such as FM broadcast transmitters, pager transmitters and cell phone transmitters. I made a video last year demonstrating filters in action, so check out RF Filters 101 to learn more and see how they work to improve signal reception, especially in urban areas. Lastly, the majority of step-up SDRs include a switchable bias T. This is a feature only one of the budget SDRs offers. So let's jump in and look at our first step-up SDR today, the AirSpy Mini. This is the lowest cost step-up SDR that we're looking at, typically selling for $99. Having said that, I have purchased several of these at $69 each during the last couple of Black Friday sales. If you're watching this in the fall, it might be worth bearing that in mind. Where it differs from your typical budget SDR is in the bandwidth. The AirSpy Mini provides 4.8 MHz of visible spectrum and up to 6 MHz of IQ sampling bandwidth. That is more than double the bandwidth you get with the typical Nualec or RTL SDR version 3. 
This SDR also has a 12-bit analog to digital converter known as an ADC. This is the chip that converts the analog signal being received into a digital signal that can be processed further by the computer. The higher bit rate translates into a higher dynamic range and lower noise floor. For comparison, the budget SDRs utilize 8-bit ADCs. Here is a comparison of the AirSpy Mini and the RTL SDR V3 monitoring around a strong VHF pager signal in my area. Firstly, you'll notice that the visible bandwidth on screen is much greater on the AirSpy Mini. You can see over 4 megs of spectrum at once. When the pager transmitter fires up, you'll also notice the AirSpy Mini suffers much less from overloading and signal imaging compared to the budget SDR. This reduction in unwanted interference may also be the result of the RF tracking filters. With a little tinkering with the decimation in SDR Sharp, I could likely reduce the interference even more. However, I have not actually experimented with these features. The AirSpy Mini also has a software switchable bias T. The budget RTL SDR version 3 also has this feature, but it is not as user friendly. Speaking of SDR Sharp, it is actually produced by AirSpy. In the early days of SDR, it was the default software used by many. As a result, a lot of plugins were developed, extending its functionality even further. Another of the positives is that it's easy to set this unit up via Spy Server, making it possible to locate it remotely. Attach it to a Raspberry Pi or similar mini computer, and you can control it via the free Spy Server software from anywhere on your network or even across the internet. The Spy Server software is actually made by AirSpy themselves. On the negative side, this SDR offers a 24 to 1700 MHz frequency range, basically the same as most of the budget dongles. I've also noticed that my RTL SDR version 3 units provide a higher signal to noise ratio in SDR Sharp than the AirSpy Mini. While the Mini certainly has a much lower noise floor, the RTL SDR V3 often does a better job of weak station monitoring in the VHF and UHF bands I regularly operate in. This is quite a surprise to me, because on paper, the AirSpy Mini should outperform all the budget dongles in this area. Next, let's talk about the SDR Play RSP1A. This is one of my favorite step-up SDRs, and I highly recommend it. First of all, it has a very wide frequency coverage. You'll be able to monitor from 1 kHz all the way up to 2 GHz with no gaps in coverage. That is a phenomenal range of frequencies to cover, and this SDR does it very well. Being able to use your receiver to monitor HF opens up a whole other world of radio. Of course, you will need different antennas for the various parts of the spectrum you want to monitor, but with this single device, you could be listening to everything from navigational aids in LF to satellite communications around 2 GHz. That is an incredible range of monitorable frequencies for under 120 bucks. Another great feature of this device is its ability to monitor up to 10 MHz of bandwidth simultaneously. That is a lot of spectrum to work with and is a superb feature for more advanced radio enthusiasts. In reality, the usable bandwidth will be around 8 MHz, but that still covers a large range of frequencies simultaneously. This can be useful for decoding multiple channels or for providing online streams of active frequencies. This SDR also features an adaptive analog to digital converter. When using lower bandwidth settings, it will run in 14-bit mode, but will drop to lower bit rates when sampling at higher rates. Amazingly, for such a frugally priced device, this step-up SDR includes many built-in filters. These filters make a huge difference in received performance for me. If you'd like to see a demonstration of them in use, you can click the link in the top right corner or check the description below after this video. Additionally, the RSP1A has a low noise amp or LNA built right in. It also features a switchable bias T which can easily be controlled within the software applications. Speaking of software, SDR Play provide the excellent SDR Uno as a free download and it works very well and has some great features including a decent memory bank and scanner although the scanner is rather slow. DST plus Fastlane can now also connect to the RSP1A. 
I haven't personally tried this as I use my RSP1A for other things, but it's good to know that the DSD Plus team are now supporting this amazing device. My biggest beef with the RSP1A is software compatibility. A lot of software simply doesn't work with SDR Play receivers. For example, you cannot use SDR Sharp with SDR Play devices. This means that you're immediately ruling out some of the really useful SDR Sharp plugins. Thankfully, the newer SDR Plus Plus works just fine, as does SDR Console version 3. Additionally, Unitrunker will not talk to SDR Play devices. SDR Trunk will not recognize an RSP1A's tuner. Having said that, there's now an unofficial fork which appears to enable some functionality. As yet, I've not tested Sammy's fork, but I've read that some people are getting it to work fine with the RSP1A. When it comes to decoding, you can always still use a virtual audio cable, so any software that requires audio from the SDR will work as normal. The RSP1A also feels a little cheap sometimes, as it comes in a plastic enclosure. I tend to prefer metal for the RF shielding qualities, but metal also offers more drop protection and gives a more premium feel. Next we move on to the AirSpy R2. In many respects, this is the big brother to the AirSpy Mini. Many of the features are the same. However, like the RSP1A, it can sample 10 MHz of bandwidth, which translates to 8 MHz of visible spectrum in your software. As you'd expect, you get 12-bit ADC, offering you that lower noise floor and higher dynamic range. So sensitivity and selectivity is good. Like the AirSpy Mini, you get RF tracking filters that help reduce out-of-band interference. However, the AirSpy R2 also provides some extra features. This SDR features an external clock input via an MCX socket. If you remove the enclosure, you'll also have access to several clock outputs. These clock features allow more advanced users to perform a wider variety of experiments with this SDR, as it means you can sync the SDR with multiple other SDRs. This opens up possibilities for passive radar experiments, direction finding, and other interesting aspects of the SDR hobby. With several AirSpy R2s, you could certainly dive a lot deeper into the world of radio signals. Inside, you'll also find two GPIO headers waiting to be used. Details of all the pen arts are provided right on the AirSpy website. Again, this is a feature designed with more advanced users in mind. If you think you might like to tinker at some depth, then this SDR is an experimenter's dream. The R2 also comes with a metal enclosure, giving it that more premium feel. And of course, it has the same switchable bias T as the AirSpy Mini, baked right into the SDR Sharp software. When it comes to negatives, you'll see the typical 24 to 1800 MHz frequency range that budget dongles have. Like its baby brother, this AirSpy unit is not going to significantly increase the range of frequencies you can receive. You'll not be able to dip your toes into the waters of HF reception, for example, unless you opt to buy an up converter. If HF reception is important to you, then the device I would be most inclined to recommend is the AirSpy HF Plus Discovery. It's actually a very small device, and its stature certainly betrays its capabilities. The device covers 0.5 kHz to 31 MHz. Now please note, the lowest frequency is half a kHz, not half a MHz. This gets you right down below VLF and into the ultra-low frequency range. This is a receiver specifically designed to monitor VLF, LF, long wave, medium wave and short wave broadcast stations as well as the numerous amateur radio bands and the many civilian and military HF utility stations out there. It is my go-to receiver for HF and I would say it's the best receiver I've ever owned. I actually experience great joy every time I use this device. The HF Plus Discovery offers phenomenal filtering. With a bank of automated pre-select filters in addition to RF tracking filters, this SDR provides excellent rejection of unwanted signals. This certainly aids in the ability to receive DX stations and bring in those weak signals. In fact, several more technically qualified reviewers than I have said this SDR offers similar performance to receivers costing more than 10 times as much. 
I have linked to one such review in the description below. Based on my real world experience using the HF Plus Discovery, I'd have no problem believing these claims. Another pleasant surprise is the 60 to 260 MHz coverage. This is like a VHF band bonus. To be honest, I hadn't expected the SDR to perform well in the VHF range. After all, it's primarily designed for VLF and HF reception. In fact, I had owned this SDR for over a year before I even tried it on VHF. Then, my mind was blown. The VHF reception on this SDR was clear and crisp, completely eliminating the broadcast FM interference I was receiving on other SDRs in the lower part of the VHF Airbond voice spectrum. This SDR offers a high dynamic range across all parts of the spectrum it covers. You can expect very good signal to noise ratios when using it in all bands. The result of this is that it's an absolute pleasure to use on VLF, HF or VHF alike. The unit is also remarkably small. Smaller than a box of matches and weighing in at just over 1 ounce or 30 grams. That's an awful lot lighter than your typical field day radio. But what about the negatives of this SDR? First of all, I'll mention the bandwidth. You get 660 kilohertz of alias free bandwidth. In VLF, LF and HF, this is not an issue at all. In fact, I usually reduce the visible bandwidth to around 50% of that. This provides me with more than enough spectrum to monitor utility stations like long-range civil and military aviation communications. If you'd like to know more about those, make sure to view the HF voice comms episode linked above and in the description below. Another potential drawback is the single antenna input. To be fair, all the SDRs in this step-up guide only have one input. However, there are devices in the $200 to $300 price range that include multiple antenna inputs. Next, I'll point out the other disadvantage of its size. It's easy to lose in a backpack or drawer. But now I'm just being nitpicky because the same would be true of some of the other SDRs I've reviewed today as well. Hopefully this video is helpful for you in choosing a step-up SDR. If you already own one or more of these devices, please add something in the comments section below and share your experience for other potential buyers. It will be really valuable to future viewers. There are links in the description to the manufacturer's websites for each of these products. I don't receive any commission when you click through, so if you decide to buy one of these STRs, let me know in the description below. Or if you're feeling extra generous, you're welcome to make a one-time donation over at frugalradio.com. Well, that's all for now. As always, thank you for tracking with the channel. It's great having your support. Until next time, stay safe out there. This is Frugal Radio, out. <coughs>